First, what I want to do is I just want you to hear this, and then we're going to focus in on um, what Ephesians 2.8 says, and I think it kind of brings some clarity. So this is, again, Sermon Book 1. This is page 8. Um, it says, What is the way to repay God who sacrificed for us even to the point of death? Wow. Then you jump down a little bit. It says, We are the heavenly children who have received the forgiveness of sins. Let us preach the sacrifice of God and the gospel of the new covenant boldly so that we can repay God for his grace. I mean, first off, that's that's like an oxymoron. That's like a contradiction right there. You can't yeah. – that, that, that shows fundamentally – the misunderstanding of what grace is, right? Yeah. So um, um, maybe unpack that a little bit. I know I know. We, we said we don't want to focus too much on just saying what's wrong, but it, it's hard to yeah. not yeah. stop and look at this, like a quote like that. Repay yeah. God for his grace. Yeah, so uh, here's kind of, kind of a really cool thing, and you can find out more about this online uh, if you just research what patronage is. Um, there's this, there's this ancient thing like concept called patronage within the roman system and it's a new testament terminology of what grace is so grace in the in greek is charis um, and the whole idea of this is that you have a relationship between two people you've got somebody that's got all the goods they've got they've got the wealth and influence political power maybe and then you're down here you're a client and you don't have those things but you need some sort of resources from this person so this person in this in this circle of grace, this person's this patron is able to give you a gift, and at that point, you can choose to accept it or not. Let's assume that you accept it. That's the second part of this of this circle. You accept the gift. You cannot repay this person because you don't you don't have any ability to mm. do so. In fact, it would actually be insulting to try to do that. Mm. What you can do is gratitude. Gratitude is a big thing in the ancient world, and Paul talks about that a lot, is mm -hmm. being grateful. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, yes. gratitude. You praise, you tell everybody, this guy, he did great things for me. And, you know, and you just tell, tell, tell all the people, you know, there's a great example of it, and I think it's in Luke, but there's, there's a centurion, and he has a uh, servant that is sick. He, and so a group of Jews actually come to Jesus, and they're like, hey, the centurion, he's a great guy. He helped build our synagogue. Mm -hmm. You know, these, these are people that were clients to and this and the centurion was a patron so they're like showing they're praising this this centurion because they he this guy did great things for us so then they're they're going to jesus saying like can you heal the servant kind of thing mm -hmm. so they're working on his behalf a little bit because they've received a gift from the centurion mm -hmm. so this was a picture of the circle of grace mm -hmm. where, where jesus really comes in to this circle so so we have god who's got all the goods yep. we're down here we do not have the goods we want the goods he gives us eternal life we get to accept it and then there's nothing we can do to repay him for it. So we, we praise him. We tell everybody, I got eternal life. I didn't do anything. I didn't deserve it. I couldn't do anything for it, but I have it. You can have it too. You just have to accept it. So this is, this is the way the circle of grace goes. Mm -hmm. And with Jesus, actually, he's a mediator in the system. So if, if you don't have a relationship with the Father, Jesus has a better relationship with the Father. You go through Jesus, Jesus with his connection to the Father, in a sense, is able to get you in connection to the circle of grace. So that's, he's, he's a mediator within the circle of grace. And once again, you can learn more about this uh, online. Just put in patronage, grace, and you can find different articles on it. It's a really interesting thing, though. And I think what that sets up, though, and what that displays is, again, Chris, that's, that's, that's a great depiction of, I think, true Christianity, if you yeah. want to call it that, or... Uh, what the gospel truly is, what Jesus truly provided for. And it is this idea where you have God with all the goods, all the provision, and you have man with nothing. And you have God, what, what false religion will say, what false gospels will always say, and you see Paul having to deal with this in Galatians and Colossians and, and all throughout the New Testament, is false religions will say, God's up here and he's he's looking at us down here saying you here here's these steps to follow here's these observances to keep here's these these rituals to observe and if you do these things and you do them right and you do them well and you do them consistently and you never stop then maybe someday you can come up here with me kind of idea <laughs> like at, at the core of what every religious gospel false religious gospel preaches it's going to be a f some form or another of that